Hi, I'm Doug. Welcome to Sailing Vessel Seeker, the boat the internet built. And in this episode, we're going to be putting cedar into the pilot house. Here's a little shot of the end result. And Betsy and I have also got a chance to take a break. Been sandblasting and painting and putting insulation in this whole summer and fall. So we took a break. We went down to Houston, Texas. I got to see the uh, Johnson Space Center down there. Oh. Never been there before. And then we went out to Cuba. Uh, and Galveston Island and uh, rummaged around there and uh, looked at boats, of course. Enjoy the video. This is where old radars go to die or to be repurchased. Man, they got a bunch of them here. Uh, yes. Nice wheel. Oh my God. Expensive. Ouch. It is expensive, but it's beautiful. Beautiful wheel though. Oh, I'm gonna have a more prettier wheel than this. That's you know what I put, put on the back deck? This, these are the nice ones though. Oh yeah, nature's head, thousand bucks. I think we can build one. It's not quite as pretty. But look, it's got, that's the urinal. So your piss is separated from the dew and you get a stir in it and then it unclips so you can empty the bottom. Not too bad. Let's see what it looks like inside. Cause I want to put something like this on the back deck. So it's got a hatchway. See, that's where you, your piss goes through there. Hatch away for the poo, and then you can see the stirring handle down in there. So, yeah. That's a lot of parts, a lot of time, but maybe we can simplify it. Something a little bit more romantic than a five gallon bucket. Normal toilets. These are the normal pump out toilets on a boat, and we already have a couple of these that are donated. So, pump water into the bowl, take your dump, pump it all out. You make it sound so disgusting. It's not disgusting. Taking a dump is the most natural thing. You don't need to word, use the word dump. Dump? Poo? You like poo better? Poo. Well, that is cute. Not working. But... I know you're so cute. Huh. Let's cute, see. Cute, cute. That can't be right. Boat included. Oh, boat included. <laughs> okay, that makes more sense. Something else that I'd like to have. These, these can be portable, but they're bilge pumps. So imagine a diaphragm here on the top and the handle sticking in there. And what happens is you got an inlet check valve and an outlet check valve. So when the diaphragm comes up, draws it in. When you push it back down, it pushes it back out this side. Really great for clearing stuff that even has a lot of crap in the water. And here's an example of one that has a diaphragm there in the top. You just can't see the check valves. You know, I don't think that's too bad. 60 bucks for that. Oh, look at this one. It's double acting. It's got two of them, one on each side. And this pump it goes on the top. Huh. Are you giving away this gusher bilge pump today? Oh, there it is. It's on the top. Now we found the price tag. Never mind. Hey, it's cheaper than the other one. I could not make this for that price. Hey, take a look. You know, it's not uh, damaging anything. That's right. This is Minnow, and Minnow has allowed us to take the pump apart it's so uh, we can inspect the uh, diaphragms, which look in when, good when, shape. When people ask me what my name is, and I tell them it's Minnow, really? they go like, Yeah, I did like that. Like your too. reaction, was his reaction. Fisherman? And uh, no, he was not. Not until much, much late, later in life. But I tell them, okay, my name is spelled in the following manner Women, yes. Men, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think you, you just sold a, 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 a manual bilge pump here. The Gusher 30. What is it supposed to be? 30 oh, gallons per gusher. minute? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I generally make everything, but... I hear is, these is, are very good. This is just too much to pass up. Aren't you glad we came Five here? Days. I am. It was a good know. idea. I don't know why we have to go there. Why do we have to go there? That's not what I said. I thought we were going to breakfast. You're going to breakfast? All right. Yeah. Over to Skipper's? We've, We've been to been Skipper's there. yesterday. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Skipper's was great. I like yeah. Skipper's. Skipper's, I'm still Skipper's, Skipper's is not bad. The... I thought it was strippers when I pulled up. Oh, yeah. I, I was oh, a little wow. disappointed, but yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Don't go That'd be my place. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's put this back together and we'll buy it. Their bilge pump handles stored, it reverses, comes out on deck, and turns two pumps. I 
no, 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 no. Look at me! I got to go for a boat ride on Galveston Bay! I got to see dolphins and seagulls and pelicans and I oh, even got to see Billy Hurl! Yeah, what kind of builder at is he? Oh. Now I'm pleased with it, but if you want a really smooth roof, you're gonna have to do some more work than this. Like you're gonna have to trim all these boards to the same width because they're a little bit off every once in a while. It leaves a gap. And then they have a lot of bend to them as well. And man, I'm not sure how to do that. So with a, another saw pass to clean up the edges so they're all nice and straight. Every once in a while they get bad enough that I actually trim off a little bit from the side of the board. You can see this one got trimmed that way. But it's in keeping with our boat. We're not a yacht. We're not really a fishing boat either. It's kind of, you know, something in between. And if you want to get really depressed about your government, no matter who your government is, there's a great book called The Problem from Hell. It's about genocide and uh, basically uh, the United States and other nations lack of ability to, well, no, lack of purpose to respond to such things because, you know, it's kind of weird. They got a number. It's like you got to have 80,000 uh, civilian dead before you can justify one military dead. And I think if you put this question before the military, they'd be much more willing to take that risk than politicians are. That's why I think it's not always a bad idea to have somebody that has military experience, you know, real military experience in the government. They will know when it's worth their risk. It's just sad because, you know, we could have stopped so much of the killing. Uh, Rwanda, uh, even Cambodia, um, if we just, A, made it our point to stop these killings. And if you want a positive note, there's another book called uh, The Better Nature of Our Angels, and it's actually uh, also about the politics of violence through the, the, uh, the world, and uh, it's actually getting much better. You know, we actually did, I mean, it took us a long time, but we have prosecuted people from Croatia and so forth for the crimes of genocide over there, um, and maybe, maybe we're getting a hand on it. Look at there. Betsy came out and finished the painting on the girls. Yeah, nice, nice. Okay, oh, it's beautiful. This is uh, this is morning. What a gorgeous sunrise. My neighbor brought his crane home, and wow, I'll tell you what, the whole sky is filled up with it this morning. Here she comes, our heater for the day. And over the past few days, I've gotten most of the ceiling filled in just got this one side over here to do now i think i'm going to go ahead and bring the wood down to the top of the windows after that we'll plan out where the cabinetry goes well it's worse than that it doesn't just come in but it's, this is rounded right so it doesn't need coming in a straight line so the boards that go in here are the most challenging thing and they're not hard to do though let me show you the first thing i do is i figure out how long this board should be and i want it to go past that furring strip there and i want to have it bevel up so the next board can come in on top of it so i know that length is about six inches so i've doing up for that now the trick is you put this board in but you put it on top of the last board and since bart's here if you just hold that there Right there, you got it? Yep. After that's there, then I can just take another board the same width as the one we're going to cut, and I can run a line using that board. Okay. Measure my distance, and there's our cut.
Oh, nicely done. No, oh, that was too short. It's also a good idea to have some screws that are a little bit longer. <laughs> so, you can reach up in there as far as you need to. Well, there it is, all the ceilings in. Man, I like having that done. It's not really flat because of the rafters above it weren't bent just perfectly. But when I get the whole thing and get a better perspective of it, like how this is eyeball level, I like it a lot better. And it is a weird shaped room, you know, with the rounded sides and the and the cambers in the ends. There's a smaller camber in the back than there is up here in the front. There's about what do you think? About four or five inches of camber there. We got four. Yeah. Not a flat surface anyway, so I think that helps hide some of the indiscretions in our paneling up here, but we'll also hide them more with uh, other stuff that goes in here because there's a rack that goes through there for the ropes coming in from the sails and yeah, cabinetry goes around the edge then, so yeah. You can hide a lot of sins. Now we're cleaning our windows, but now we think we've got the sparrows trained. They had a little game of fly through the pilot house. So I think the uh, dirt on the windows must have saved several lives. <laughs> yeah. Well, the cat would have been appreciative of dead birds laying out there. Bart and I have finished the front wall today and the upside above the windows on both sides, just the back wall behind me is all we got left to do. Nice day. Okay, I often get asked about my neighborhood. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my neighborhood. I was listening to a great little program on uh, NPR Hidden Brain. The uh, podcast is called Zip Code Destiny. And uh, I recommend you get that, but if you just wanna to cut to the chase of it. You know, I hear this thing at work. I used to work downtown. Very nice, very elite office, lots of high paid people. And it really pissed me off when I hear this thing. Ah, uh, oh, their kids have the same opportunities that all other kids have. That is such bullshit, okay? And this is a research study that just points out how much bullshit that is. This is a map that you can get. Go to the link opportunityatlas.org. And it's the research based on uh, basically the population, watching the population see if these kids do well later on in life and where they grew up. So it's like, does your zip code have give your kids a good potential for being successful and following the American dream or not? And uh, the whole United States is on this thing. So you can imagine that the South is, is a lot of red. But if you zoom in on those red spots too, you know, like Alabama there, uh, you go into uh, Montgomery, See, so even on those cities, you'll see this is where the successful people live in Montgomery. Now, it's sad that that much of the United States is read out like that. I live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and it's right over here on, uh, you know, it's looking pretty good as an overall picture. But when you zoom in, there's Tulsa. This is the, the rich neighborhoods down the south. And uh, I live right up here in the middle of this uh, dark red zone. Okay, so one of the things I encourage you to do, if you want to make a change to the earth and to our civilization and to people, is you can move these people out of this neighborhood and put them someplace else, and their children, their young children, will grow up to be successful. Or you can move into one of these neighborhoods if you are the successful, you know, count yourself successful, you've made it in life, that kind of thing. Uh, I put myself firmly in that category. Move into one of these neighborhoods and you will be astonished at the amount of good that you can do because you're setting an example. You know, this idea that we take all these people who need help and put them into this one little community and call it a project and that's going to be successful is ludicrous. That is just insane. What we need is a diversity of people so that when John Little Johnny walks down the street in the morning going to his school uh, from his parents' house who can't pay their water bill, can't pay their light bill, because they're spending it all on meth, let's just be honest, he can at least pass by this boat and he can see something that says, wow, the whole fucking world ain't like mom and dad at home. There is a choice that I can make with my life. That's all it takes. You know, you take somebody and give them an idea in their head that maybe I don't have to follow the path that the rest of my family has followed. Because when you listen to this program, it's just amazing. I mean, there's places where if you're a black male, you, in any given day, you have a 40% chance of being incarcerated on that day. The world shouldn't be like that, and it shouldn't be like this either. So, help make a change. All right, 
right, we're all set up below decks now to start the uh, cedar installation into the aft cabin. Still got the forward cabin to do too, but this one looks like more fun because the walls slope out so much. But it's only got a flat ceiling. That'll be nice. Still, I'm enjoying the cedar a lot more than I did the foam. That was just way, way too much foam to put in. And the forward cabin will be the last one. And I went ahead and put in a strip below the windows because, damn, it just looks cool. I am really happy with the way that this came out. You know, it's funny. I, I went crazy about it when I started it, but, you know, I can, I can live with everything I see now. Maybe that's just because it's done. You know, I've been thinking more about my neighborhood, too. If I had had insight that I do now, I would move to this neighborhood from everything that I've lived in before. Homeowners associations, nicer houses, all that stuff. Because I really like the, uh, the community here. You know, I, can, I talk to the neighbors here. I can, uh, uh, I can assist the neighbors here. They'll ask for help. I can ask for their help. You know, they'll hand food over the, the fence to me. It's just, it's just a great little neighborhood. And if I had to make my choice again, I'd live here even if I didn't have the boat. And it didn't take many good neighbors to make you feel that way either. I got Bart, I got the Floreses. Uh, you know, there's, there's tweakers around here too, but literally, you know, we have had nothing stolen except out of the mailbox from this property. Now I got the fence and the dog. Other neighbors do lose things, but we watch each other's back. You know, there's, there's a need for that. There's no, uh, there's no other protection from that. And it's really not a serious uh, crime neighborhood if you're not selling drugs. If you're selling drugs, you have some serious things to worry about, okay? I mean, there's competition for that. But if you're just a person living in this neighborhood, it doesn't take too much to safeguard yourself. So, you know, I've had people at work that they won't even come here because it's where this, na where this house is. You know, it's, it, it is considered that bad a neighborhood, but when you live in it, it's just like everything else. The things you fear when you imagine them are much greater than the reality. Isn't that right, Earl? We're talking about killers in the neighborhood. You are the biggest one by far, aren't you? And I got to looking at this gusher pump. I know why the price was so little on it now. It's missing one of these ports. You know, on this side, it has it. I'm sure I could buy that, but that's such an easy thing to make. It's just an aluminum plate with a piece of pipe uh, welded onto it. So that will be an easy fix and certainly worth the, the discount I got on the pump. But that's why it's nice to be able to weld and fix little things. You can get great prices because there's one little part missing that's a simple part and you can make it. What did you make today? Appreciate you sharing your photos. Send those in to me. You can put them up on our Facebook group. That's uh, SV Seeker on Facebook. Or you can just email them to me as an attachment. Uh, SV Seeker at ymail.com. And uh, I really appreciate getting that. Everybody has something they can inspire somebody else with. Your birdhouse is beautiful. Thank you.